Welcome back in, everyone. You're listening to the FF Dynasty's Married to the Game. We're breaking down rookie wide receivers for your pleasure. If you'd like to join in the discussion, hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. If you feel so inclined, we'd love to hear from you. We're gonna we're gonna get into a little Anthony Miller. He's uh, one of my favorite players to watch. Sure. He did not participate in the combine. He, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to rely on good old film for this what one. What a bummer, man. But he did. He had a he had a fractured foot in the yeah. bowl game. Kept him out of the Senior Bowl. His pro Kept day is like combine. April seventh. I don't know if uh, if he's gonna be full go full speed ahead for that or not, but that'll be something to to tune into since he didn't run at all or do any of the drills or any of the sure stuff at the combine. So just gonna have to go based off what we saw on tape, which I really enjoyed pretty much the whole the whole thing. Yeah, I mean the first thing that stands out to you is is just the consistency of of what he did. Uh, I know you could knock the competition a little bit if you want, but. Each year in 16, played 13 games, 95 yard or 95 receptions, 1,400 yards, average 15 a play, uh, and 14 touchdowns. Then this year he comes back and pretty much does the same damn thing. 96 catches, 1,400 yards, 15 yards uh, per catch, and then adds four more touchdowns with 18. So strong, just consistent in, in crushing the competition that he was facing. And that's all he can really do. This guy's a walk on, didn't Tough. get recruited, had to uh, come and earn everything on the field. He's just got the mentality of working hard for everything, always Love on the that. grind, nothing taken for granted. Chip on um, his shoulder, and then all that kind of just shows on the field, you know. Absolutely, man. This dude, this dude plays all over the field. He's a pretty solid route runner. We'll get into a little bit of that here in a minute. I like his ability to to dive and make the play, make the catch versus just trying to run under it. And he's got those late hands that we've been talking right. about with a lot of these dudes. He waits to the last the second. Defender. I really like that. Um, I mean, everything just seems tight, compact, and quick, man. I just I love the game speed. He looks he looks fast out there. I expect yeah. him to put up good numbers in a combine situation, um, but. You know, he just, it's not fast all the time. He varies his game speed. He he will delay and he will give you hesitation and he will try. He does his best to, like, keep you off balance and then exploit that. Right. Well, you mentioned that he played all over. He, he did. Um, I think uh, at the next level he might mostly be kind of in the slot here. Um, but given his experience and the diversity at the college level, I think it could open up the possibilities of the next level, which give could possibly give kind of the right OC um, – just something a, a whole a bunch of vari- right a chess piece that could be good but I, I do i think he'll primarily be operating out of the slot um but i think he's a really fun and exciting player to watch how you hand this guy the ball and good luck bringing him down he kind of did everything for this team every time they needed a big play he was their guy um the offense kind of ran through him memphis kind of lost their offensive coordinator to notre dame chip long you hardly saw any decline in what was going on. In fact, he improved. Um, now, uh, Daryl Dickey took over, but Mike Norvell, who is the head coach, is pretty much calls the plays, and they kind of have like an more of like an overseer at the offensive coordinator position. Um, and then the kind of style that they run is the is the uh, tons of RPOs. Basically, the coach was kind of saying in an interview that I read that they run a lot of the same plays out of. Uh, basically just different formations and will highlight like a different player coming out of those different formations. Um, so they call it, you know, a pro style with spread tendencies. And they said, you know, we're, we're going to, they could give us a speeding ticket this year for how fast we're going <laughs> to run our offense. And that's kind of their MO and what they want to do. I will say watching kind of Riley Ferguson, we've been talking a lot of bad quarterback play and he's got some mediocre stuff on, on his resume too, but he's fun to watch. He's, He's elusive. He could get away from you, and he's got a really strong arm. He can kind of make the throw from anywhere on the field, which all ha- helps Anthony Miller get to that, you know, ninety-six catch threshold there. And I, I had a lot of fun actually watching Ferguson play. Yeah, I agree, man. He was slinging it. Ninety-six catches is a shit ton of catches in college right. for one year. And just the the back-to-back consistency is love that. What you're looking for wasn't a fluke. Wasn't a flash in the pan. He came up and backed it up. Really enjoy that. This dude. Has a various, you know, display. He's got a, a various release moves off the line of scrimmage. Um, the UCLA game comes to mind. 
He sure. had those dudes on skates the whole, the whole time, game. which I know they were like the 122nd ranked defense in the nation, yeah. which is poor to quite poor. But he tweeted out before the game how this is the walk-ons versus the you know the five stars, five star recruits, and then came yeah. out there and and he just he put it on him and just beat them boys. Right, nine catches, 185 yards, two touchdowns. You love to see your dude eat against a bad defense, but he had this he had these boys on skates the whole game. Like I don't know. I don't know the, all the names of the various release moves. I can I can identify different ones. I don't know what the technical name is, but there's this one play that comes to mind. We're gonna call this release move the double shuffle step. <laughs> if I was if I was naming release moves, that's what I'd go with. But he basically gave this defender like two stutter steps. It was these two delayed stutter steps and then a quick jab and a cut. And like I had to rewatch that play several times just to see what it was that he did because it was all so the quick that and he did so, right. And then, like, this defender had no clue which way this cat was going. Right. Like, it was over. He could have he could have jabbed and cut any time he wanted to, but he, he set him up. And then it was like it was basically a post route. The ball was thrown a little bit behind him. He adjusts to the ball, catches it behind his body, breaks a, immediately breaks a tackle, and then he's off to the races. And I right. can't remember if he scored on that play, but I know it was a it was a big hitter. And it was just it was awesome to see. Um it, it just it show, it was so many things. I know you hate to to put it all in one play, but man, when he broke right. that tackle by making that catch, and then and then he's no, that, basically streaking through the quad to the gymnasium right, at that, that point. Right, show, that showcased all of his, a lot of his abilities. And do you think KFC still open? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, you're right. It it, it it showcased a lot right. in one play. So I mean, he he can win in one on one situations like that, or you can bust your zone. Uh, I I think he has some good physicality to his game, which I really like to go along with the quick twitch and explosive feet that he has. Um, kind of keeps you guessing where you're going, and if you guess wrong, like you said, pretty much toast. Uh, he really knows how to use his body, and uh, will jab and lean to get a defender to open up. And, Wicked jab and, step, and, and and just exploit you. Yeah, I don't know if it's like sunken hips or if it's the threat of the change of direction or whatever it is, but the, he just seems to always have cornerbacks off balance right. and out of position there, get their hips out of position, and you can exploit them any which way you want. Right, and he dominates in the in the downfield stuff with that with those kind of moves, and then he'll beat you with a little bubble screen, pick the way through your defense. He's got good uh, field vision, quickness, balance to kind of go along with all that stuff. He's tough, man. I love his comeback to the ball. He's never taking plays off. He comes back hard to help bail his quarterback out. If you did want to knock him for something, I guess you could criticize the hands. On occasion, you see some concentration drops. Sure. You see a fair amount of body catches. But for the most part, he comes down with the ball, which is like the main thing. I know you can knock a body catch for sure, but he comes down with the ball. He does make some business decisions over the middle of the field sometimes. But then sometimes he flashes really awesome hands, and he can make a ridiculous right. highlight catch. And he can make those grabs of balls outside of his body and you see him contorting his yeah. his his frame to to make those catches so it's right. like i think these concentration drops can can be overlooked a little bit in when you're evaluating a guy yeah and then to to kind of cap off all that stuff i mean then you go the, when you cert when you circle one thing well it's hard to circle one thing on like his counting stats or whatever you want to call it but you know you circle the catches and you circle the yardage and the average but then the red zone stuff man he's just when he gets into that red area, he just he takes his game to even another level. He's so tough to wrangle in the red zone. Fourteen and then eighteen touchdowns. I mean, at a guy Sick who's five eleven, one ninety. That's right. these aren't typical things. Twenty two bench press reps. So that's the right. only thing he did at the combine. But that man's strong. That is a lot. This is not typical things that you see out of a guy like this. He just he knows how to get open. He knows how to win in situations. And when the field gets condensed, he's even better, which is not normal. Absolutely. One thing we haven't really mentioned too much yet is is his after the catch ability. I mean, he's basically a running back when he gets the ball in his hands. They threw him a lot of screen passes. They gave him some end rounds. They just wanted to get the ball in this dude's hands any way they can. He's great in the open field. He's he's he knows when there's not much any he knows when there's no more yak to be had. And then he decides to lower his shoulder yeah. and fall forward for a few extra yards. Like, I love that awareness and the ability to diagnose a situation quickly and then cut your losses and get just a little bit right. more. Yeah, no. I, and he's good at getting tackled and avoiding those hits. Right. No, and you don't, gets you a don't couple see him extra get up a ton and, and, and he'll squeeze out a couple more uh, little yards falling forward. I like what I saw from him in blocking. He'll get after it. He'll block you through the whistle. 
I think that's going to help him. Yeah, he, he does get downfield and block, and, you know, I've, sometimes he gets beat. Not the biggest guy, but he's pretty strong, and he's willing to do so. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're willing to do so and you get beat every once in a while, nobody's really going to be mad at you. Right. But there's times where he absolutely goes out there and crushes dudes. So. Right. Yeah, the willingness definitely isn't an issue. Um, this dude is really, really good against the sideline. Um, he's out there. He's got that toe drag working to Love perfection. Love the toe drag. Which I didn't... I didn't quite understand at first like the difference between the toe tap and the toe drag because there is a difference, and you don't want a toe tap unless you absolutely have to, but the key is is that you don't leave the, the ground unnecessarily. A lot of times, these wide receivers just want to jump in the air at the ball. Right, well, the key there is unnecessarily. Right. If it's and necessary, I you got to do what you got to do. I understand if you got to go up and make right. the play, but when you when you leave your feet, you're leaving yourself susceptible to taking a big hit, and you're also leaving yourself open to being pushed out of bounds right. and not being able to get those feet down. Right. So there was this play um, that I watched, you know, Matt Wallman break down of him getting pushed out of bounds as he's coming back to the ball against the sideline, but he, he starts his toe drag like a yard and a half early and lets his body lean out of bounds towards the ball, and he makes a catch as the guy is pushing him in the back. But had he left the if he if he'd have left the ground, it wouldn't have been a catch. But like these are the plays you see NFL star wide receivers making on Sunday, and he's already there. He's got this. It's a technic. It's like a difficult technical thing to be able to have that concentration to fall out of bounds right. full speed with your with no bracing of anything. You got to keep your feet down. Like it's just they yeah. make it look so easy, and it's not easy. And he no. crushes it. So no, that's absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. No. That's a. That's a solid point. Love all that. So I don't know what else you got. I know. Um, I mean, basically, I, I focused in on you know, base the two toughest games he had all year were against the best competition was probably the two UCF games. Mm -hmm. um, and the first one, they definitely get the better of them. Um, so it's not it's not the uh, not the end of the world. In the first game in seventeen. They kind of get slapped, and Miller has one of the worst games of his of his uh, season that that, uh, that, in that year in that particular game. Um, but he does sh show a nice play against Mike Hughes, who's kind of a, a, a pretty solid NFL prospect. He's right now he's kind of projected as a round two guy, but they were saying you know maybe if he stayed another year, basically they're just projecting him in round two and not in round one because of in inexperience, right? Not because of ability. Um, so he has him most of the game, but he does get him. Um, at one point in the game, he kind of gives him a little jab step outside, then releases inside. Hughes gives him a little jam and hand fights with him up the field. Then kind of seems again to sell or lean outside on Hughes while still fighting with each other. And then gets himself free by whipping his hips inside, uses his body to shield Hughes after all that checking for a nice little grab up the seam for a first down. So nice little sequence of events there to show you a kind of a variety of different moves and his kind of grittiness of... Uh, to win against a good corner there. And then in the second game, he's got Clark on him uh, in the beginning of the game, number 14. He roasts him every time he's pretty much on him. Smoked him with a sluggo. Uh, that is just a ridiculous highlight. Nobody's even near him. Just eats that whole side of the field up. Um, was pretty much Memphis's whole offense in the second game. Like you can see him just visibly just so winded at the end of this game because he is just carrying the squad through a very talented UCF game. They do end up coming up short. Um, but Miller gets one-on-one -on -one with Hughes in the red zone in a big moment and just scorches him for the TD. Um, kind of sets up inside, uh, plants his feet, takes off outside towards the pylon, gets a position on Hughes, who now kind of doesn't really have the turn to the uh, time to turn around because he's, he's already been beaten. Um, so he can't really play the ball because he's kind of already playing catch up. Um, so Miller uses his hands to check Hughes, who's kind of now running at him and just kind of stifle him kind of mm -hmm. where he's at there and then goes up and, and, and snags the ball on a nice little fade route, I guess you could call it here. And it's a, it's a huge TD with four minutes left against a top notch, uh, corner here um and and just shows you again that he could he could beat and compete with some of the better guys uh in the in the league or at least in college football like right mike ucf obviously isn't the greatest team ever but i mean you could make a case that they maybe should have got a chance to play you know 
in, yeah. in in the college football uh, playoffs here. They they beat Auburn and and Hughes is a Hughes is a really solid player. Got to so. like that. Yeah, um, that's that's awesome. There's not too many negative qualities about this guy, man. Like really, the only one in my book is that he's 23, which. I wish I was twenty three. I do. I do wish I was twenty three <laughs> as well. I mean, same he, age as Calvin Ridley. He is. He is a little old. I think he'll be twenty four by the time the season starts. Yeah. Um, Maybe a little older than Calvin. Yeah, twenty four in October. Um, so that's it's a little bit of a knock, and we'll probably knock him, knock him down a couple of spots, maybe. Right. Um, but again, you said it to lead this thing off way back from all of our <laughs> rambling before this of how you know you'd be interested in being kind of maybe middle second, early first. Or early second, middle second, middle second, late, late second, anywhere in the second, and, and maybe picking up a guy like a like a Miller and be super Absolutely. stoked to have. Him. I think he's going to get disrespected. I think people aren't going to appreciate his level of work as well as much as they should. They're going to be down because they didn't get to see him crush the combine because that matters so much to everyone. It's so draining. Right. It's good to see. It's fun to watch, but like. He can show you some stuff. I like to see the athleticism graded, but... I like to see them all next wanna, to each other. I want to see you play on the field. I got to see you play on the field. Put them pads on, man. Right. Let's do it. For sure. I mean, we it's, it's a nice tool. It's a part of the puzzle, I, I think. But right. it's not the end all. But it's on, not so. supposed to change your mind like 180 degrees. Right. Like, trust what you see on the football field. Right. Unless you're bad at looking at what's going on in the football field then just listen to us people probably think that we're bad just by this last hour and 10 well, minutes or whatever we they haven't did. made it this deep into the show if they well, these guys <laughs> that was are the case. idiots yeah we're, we're working on it we're getting there yeah we're building we're trying to figure once this i thing figure out. out what the names of these release moves are <laughs> i'm gonna be unstoppable all right well let's, raw potential over here let's finish up the last guy michael gallup but after the break first a quick commercial break <laughs> 